Well, good evening to you all, my Victory Through Faith Church family and friends. It's Pastor Jay. I speak and I decree the blessing of the Lord over your lives. I pray that all is going well with you. And it's my prayer that all goes well for you. I'm excited to continue our lesson with you today. We began last week talking about mental obedience. So we're going to continue with lesson two today. And we're going to learn more about what I believe God gave me to share with you. So before we go any further, y'all know what we got to do. Let's go before the Lord in prayer because we want to make sure that the spirit of God is involved in what we're doing. So, Father God, I thank you for another opportunity to teach your word with accuracy and with simplicity. I pray that the power within your children is awakened and activated as we fellowship around your word. I yield myself to you right now, Lord God, and I pray that by your spirit, I will speak your words. I pray for revelation knowledge to flow freely to and through your children. And I pray that we all will receive at least one word from you that we can apply to our lives and experience a divine change. So I give you the praise the glory and the honor in advance for what the teaching and the preaching of your word will accomplish in our lives in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Well, let's get into it. <clears throat> As I alluded to, we're going to begin with lesson two of our series. Didn't intend for it to be a series. Uh, it stretched out longer than I thought it would. But I think or however, if we get through everything today, It'll only be a two lesson series. So I guess you wouldn't even call that a series. Just call that a two part lesson. Um, we're talking about mental obedience. And today I'm going to zone in or zoom in on what I am referring to as thought filtration. Thought filtration. Um, so before I get into that, let me cover some points of review because Maybe you watched last week, but you forgot some of the key points or maybe you didn't have a chance to watch last week's message at all. That's all right. We got it in the archive. So when you have a free moment, go back to last week's message. That's December the 6th of our midweek message, Mental Obedience, Lesson 1, Part 1. And you can watch that later on and then you'll have all the information you need. You'll be up to speed with the rest of us. However, if you've already seen Mental Obedience Part 1, you'll recognize these four review statements from last week. Review statement number one is that mental obedience is developed by bringing and keeping our minds, our minds and our thinking. Those are interchangeable terms. They're synonymous with one another. So mental obedience is developed by bringing our mind and keeping our mind and our thinking into compliance with the word of God. <clears throat> and that's real big on my heart. Spirit of God laid it on my heart, even as recently as this morning, that uh, he wanted his children. I'll give it to you verbatim because he spoke it to my heart this morning at 940 a.m. He said, I need my people to get in compliance with my will. That's what the spirit of God spoke to my heart just this morning. He said, I need my people to get in compliance with my will. And he put capital M capital Y on that last my. He's letting us know that he needs us to get into compliance with his will. And last week we learned that mental obedience is developed by bringing and keeping our minds and our thinking into compliance with the word of God. When he said into compliance with his will, God's will and God's word are synonymous. So when he tells us to get into compliance with his will, he's telling us to get into compliance with his word. Amen. Uh, so point number two, mental obedience. This is good. Mental obedience has to be developed. It does not happen automatically. You're not just going to stumble into being obedient. You're not just going to <clears throat> pray your way into it. Prayer is a part of it. However, as the scriptures tell us, faith without works is dead. You can pray for it, but then you got to do something. So the faith that you're releasing or the faith that you're believing God for or the faith, actually the faith that you already possess, it can be released in your air, in your area of need when you bring yourself into compliance with the word of God. 
and that mental obedience will be developed over time. It doesn't happen automatically. The more we yield, the greater the return on our mental obedience will receive. Mental obedience has to be developed. It does not happen automatically. Point of review number three. Now, this is something that I spoke by the spirit of God last week and I highlighted it because I really wanted to make sure that I shared it with you again today. And it was this statement. We must follow the orders that God has given if we want to live the life that God has promised. Whew. Ooh, glory. That's good. OK, now, if you didn't have a reason for mental obedience before, that ought to give you the reason you need right there. I say it again. We must follow follow the orders. Now, this wasn't in my lesson last week. This was spoken by the spirit of God as I was teaching. It came out last week, but it wasn't a part of my uh, <clears throat> my lesson plan. The spirit of God spoke this as we were teaching. We must follow the orders that God has given if we want to live the life that God has promised. Now, that's good, Holy Spirit, because I didn't even try to make that connection. Couple that with what he said this morning. I need my people to get in compliance with my will. I need my people to get into compliance with my will. We must follow the orders that God has given if we want to live the life that God has promised. So what is he saying? You're not going to live the life that I've promised you if you don't get in compliance with my will. You're not going to live the life I promised you if you don't follow the orders that I've given. If you don't do what I tell you, you won't receive what I have for you. Wow. And so I believe that the reason God is talking to us about mental obedience is because we get God's instructions, but we try to do it in our own strength or, or we try to do it uh, physically. Uh, we're going to I'm going to not do this for a season. I'm going to I'm going to embrace that for a time. Well, we start going about the business of doing, but we never go about the business of renewing. We got to renew our minds. Romans 12, 2 tells us, don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed. How? By the renewing of your mind so that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. And he says, I need my people to get in compliance with my will, my good, acceptable and perfect will. Well, how do we do that, Lord? By renewing our minds to the truth of God's word and embracing mental obedience. Listen to this, and this will be my last statement of review. Operating in or operating with mental obedience is possible because we already have the mind of Christ. God wouldn't tell you to do something you didn't have the capability to do. God wouldn't tell you to do something you didn't have the capacity to do. God wouldn't tell you to do something he hadn't already equipped you to do. So when he's telling us to renew our minds, when he's telling us to embrace mental obedience, especially what we're going to learn about in a moment, this thought filtration that we're going to speak on, he wouldn't tell us to do it if we didn't have the capability to do it. And we have the capability to do it because we already possess the mind of Christ. First Corinthians 2 16 tells us that let this mind be. Let's go. Let's go. I wasn't going to go there, but it's Bible study. Let me go ahead and read it to you. First Corinthians chapter two. Verse 16 in the King James Version of the Bible says, for who hath known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. We have the mind of Christ. And then Philippians 2, 5 says, let this mind be in you. Let this mind be in you. Allow this mind to be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. So we got it. We have to allow it to develop within us and operating in mental obedience is possible because we have the mind of Christ. And if we connect our third point of review, we must follow the orders that God has given if we want to live the life that God has promised. So we got to do what God has told us to do if we want to live the life that God has provided for us. Amen. All right. All right. All right. That's good. Y'all. That's good. Now, let's get into lesson two. Let's get into the meat of lesson two. And I want to um, I want to open up with a statement that's going to lead us into what we're talking about today. Mental obedience requires consistent thought filtration. And I want to talk about that today. Thought filtration. Now, when I first get into this, I don't want you to be turned off because it feels too daunting. 
I want you to remember, if God tells us to do it, we have the capacity and the ability to perform it. Maybe not in our own strength, but we can do all things through Christ, which strengthens us. Amen. So I don't want you to consider yourself. I want you to consider that now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that you could ask for, think, hope, dream or wish. So you might not feel like you can accomplish it as I break it down. But trust me, you're well able to do it because you have the spirit of God, the same power that raised Jesus from the dead is dwelling in you by the Holy Spirit right now. So whatever God tells us to do, we have the ability to do it. And mental obedience requires consistent thought filtration. In other words, out with the old, in with the new on a continual basis. We have to filter our thoughts. We have to make sure that our thoughts are in alignment and in agreement with God's word. If we don't filter out, oh, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. I got a statement for y'all a little later that just rocked me. And I, I pray that it I pray that it hits you like it hit me. I'm going to share that with you in a few moments. So listen to this. Mental obedience requires consistent thought filtration. That means it's out with the old in with the new. Or when you talk about a filtration system, it's out with the contaminants and you only retain what is pure. If you've got a water filtration system at your home, um, it might be a charcoal based filtration system or whatever the case may be. Uh, the water runs through a filter. That filter actually does what the name implies. It filters out the contaminants. It filters out the minerals. It filters out whatever, whatever, whatever contaminants are picked up in the pipes along the way. And I want you to understand that as we live in this world, we're in it, but we're not of it. As we live in it, we pick up contaminants along the way. So it's important that we engage in consistent thought filtration to get rid of the contaminants, to get rid of the things that we pick up just as we navigate through this world system, as we navigate through the pipe of culture, we got to renew our minds and we have to filter our thoughts because your spirit is always open. And there are times when your spirit is picking things up that you might not even be aware of because you're operating or is receiving on a subconscious level. You're in a mall shopping and they're playing music in the background and you're not even paying attention to the music, but your spirit is wide open or you're watching something on TV and you fall asleep and you don't know what you're watching because you fall asleep, but your spirit is wide open or you're having a conversation with a friend and you're not sure what they're talking about, but you just kind of nod and, and you agree with it. You don't even know what level they're communicating on, but your spirit is wide open. We need consistent thought filtration to get rid of the contaminants, to get rid of the things that don't belong as we navigate our day to day lives in this world out with the old and with the new. Listen to this. The major key to shifting from our former way of life over into the new life in Christ Jesus is mind renewal or as we just learned, thought filtration. I want you to remember. I want you to think about that, that we can use that synonymously too. mind renewal slash thought filtration because I'm renewing my mind daily to the truth of God's word. So I'm engaging in thought filtration and I'll show you exactly how we do that in a moment. Let's look at something. Listen to this because you're a new creation in Christ. You're a new, new creature in Christ Jesus. What does it tell us? Old things passed away. Behold, all things. Come on. Y'all know I, I, I really do endeavor to just quote this stuff to y'all without turning to all these scriptures. However, I've trained myself with the help of the Holy Spirit. I've trained myself to go to the scriptures every time they come to my heart because I don't want to just quote it. I want to embody the scripture. So I'll get it in my eye gate and I'll get it in my ear gate and I'll speak it out of my mouth at the same time. So it takes root in my heart. So in second Corinthians chapter five, verse 17 says, therefore, if any man or woman be in Christ, he or she is a new creature or a new creation. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. So our thought filtration 
helps us to shift away from our former way of life. That's good, Lord. It helps us to shift from the residue of our former way of life into the new life in Christ Jesus. Mind renewal does that. Our thought filtration does that. That's so good because we know we give our lives to Christ and we still carry some residue with us. Maybe you grew up in a broken home and you give your life to Christ Jesus, but the residue of growing up in that broken home still remains. Maybe you were in a, an abusive relationship and you've given your life to Christ Jesus, but the residue of that abusive relationship still remains. Maybe you were maybe you were taken advantage of as a youth and you gave your life to Christ Jesus, but the residue of that incident still remains. Well, it's our mind renewal that gets that garbage and that residue from the old life out of our system. We renew our minds to the truth of God's word. Glory to God. And the residue that the enemy has been trying to keep attached to you begins to fall away. For, oh, that's so good. I love that. I see that image, Lord. It begins to fall away in clumps. You know how when something loses it, it loses its adhesion. I, I see it as clumps on our on our minds. And as we renew our minds to the truth of God's word in big clumps, the residue of our past and the disappointment and the hurt and the shame and the loss and the frustration, it just begins to fall away. And what happens when weight falls away? You get lighter and lighter and lighter and freer and freer and freer because whom the sun sets free, glory to God, is free indeed. The major key to shifting away from the residue of your former life into the renewed person that you are, the new creation in Christ that you are in Christ Jesus is mind renewal and thought filtration. Glory to God. That stirred me up. No, I speak this by the spirit of God. No more residue for you. No more residue for you. The things that the enemy has worked hard to keep on your mind and to keep in your heart, to pull you away from the truth of who you are in Christ Jesus and what God has done for you on the cross. I speak to you right now in the name of Jesus and I declare that you are free from the residue of disappointment. You are free from the residue of trauma. You are free from the residue of abuse. You are free from the residue of self-condemnation whom the son sets free is free indeed. And I speak and I release freedom over your life. In Jesus name, glory to God. Hallelujah. You're a new creation in Christ. That old stuff has passed away and all things have become new. So let's look at this. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Mm, mm, mm. OK, we shift away from our former way of life and we shift over into the new life in Christ Jesus. How do we do that, Pastor Jay? Mind renewal or the process of thought filtration. Let's look at Ephesians chapter four. Uh, I'm going to start at verse 17 and I'll read verses 17 through 24. <laughs> it says this, I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord that you henceforth or from now on walk not after or walk not as other Gentiles walk, in the vanity of their mind. Oh, the mind is so key. Having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart. Who being past feeling, this is Paul talking to the church at Ephesus about unsaved unsaved people when he talks about as other Gentiles walk in verse 17, he said other Gentiles because the church at Ephesus was largely a Gentile church. A Gentile is anybody that is a non-Jew. So these are Gentile children of God, Gentile believers that have given their lives to Christ Jesus. And he's saying, don't walk like the folks you come out of. Don't act like the don't act like what you got delivered from. He said, don't walk like other Gentiles walk. Don't live like other Gentiles live. He said they have their understanding darkened. They're alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart. He said, who being past feeling have given themselves over to lasciviousness to work all uncleanness with greediness. 
That's the world. Those are Gentile people that have not given their lives to Christ. But in verse 20, Paul says, but you have not so learned Christ. If so be that you have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus. There is only one source of truth. The spirit of God revealed this to me uh, a while back. There are three sources of information in the world. Opinion, fact, truth. Opinion is the lowest form of information because anybody can have an opinion. Opinion doesn't have to be backed up by data. You can just feel a certain way and say it. That's your opinion. You're entitled to it because that's how you feel. Opinions are often not rooted in opinions are often not something you can build a foundation on. Opinions are like sand. When the storms rage and the winds be vehemently against your house, if it's built on opinion, it's going to fall. Facts are OK. Facts are the second level of information. I say there's nothing wrong with facts until the facts uh, negate or the, until the facts uh, disagree with the truth of God's word. It's a it's a fact that the sun rises in the east, sets in the west. Right. It's a fact that after day comes night. So we're not against facts. <laughs> That's good. I had some pop. We're not against facts, but we are against those fear based thoughts. All right. We're not against facts until they disagree with the word of God. When facts disagree with the word of God, then we have to choose the highest level of information with this truth, which is truth. And the Bible tells us that God's word is truth. The truth is in Jesus. There's not your truth and my truth. What people are really saying is I'm living by my set of facts. Sometimes people say I'm living by my opinion. You live by yours. And they say, well, that's my truth. It's really not their truth. It's their opinion. Because there's not a lot of truth out here we can choose from. There's only one source of truth. God's word is truth. Jesus is truth. The truth is in Jesus. That's what the scriptures tell us. The truth is in Jesus. Not only is the truth in Jesus, the truth is Jesus. Amen. So the truth is in Jesus and the truth is Jesus. So you got opinion. Anybody can have them. You got facts. Facts are fine, especially mathematical facts and whatnot, because that's how a lot of the inventions that we have and enjoy today exist because of mathematical facts and all these type of facts that are, are, are principles that exist. That's fine. But when facts don't align with truth. We got to go to the highest level of information that exists, and that's truth. And God's word is truth. It's not your truth versus my truth. It's I believe the truth. And if you disagree with the truth that I believe, that makes what you believe false. Because anything that is measured against the truth, if it doesn't agree with the truth, has to be a lie. We're not trying to make people feel bad about what they believe. That's not our intent. Our intent is to lock in on truth. And to embrace truth. And if anybody or anything disagrees with the truth that we embrace, we have to lovingly or sometimes maybe not so lovingly reject their notion because it does not align with the truth that we believe. Not our truth, the truth. You continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed and you will know the truth and the what? The truth will make you free. That's John 8, 31, 32. The truth is what frees you. The truth frees you from the expectation of men. The truth frees you from the deceit of the world. The truth frees you from a lot. Of, that's good, Lord. The truth frees you from the clutches of the enemy. Amen. Let's look at this. Let's look at this. Let's look at this. OK. Verse 20 said, but you have not so learned Christ. If so, be that you have heard him and have been taught by him. We just said this. As the truth is in Jesus that you put off concerning the former conversation. OK, I'm going to read this and I want to show you something that you put off concerning the former conversation. The old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lusts and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. That word be renewed. That actually has a continuous connotation to it, which means you haven't been renewed. You continually will be renewed. You can read that and being renewed continuously in the spirit of your mind and that you put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. So I want to show you something. We see a process here. Verse 22, put off. 
Verse 23, be renewed. Verse 24, put on. So my renewal is how I put off the old and put on the new. My renewal is the bridge for me to walk away from the old and walk into the new. If I want to put off the old and put on the new, I have to be renewed in my mind. Glory to God. My renewal is the key to walking in newness of life. If I don't renew my mind, then I'll start walking as the old me because I haven't put off that old fault. I haven't put off that old way of thinking, way of being, way of doing because I haven't renewed my mind. When I renew my mind, I'm renewing my mind to the new me that I became when I gave my life to Christ Jesus. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. In Christ. Therefore, if any man. Oh. Look, we knew we said a few years ago, I'm fresh. We said that in our church services. I'm fresh. I'm a new creature in Christ Jesus. Old things have passed away. All things have become new. I'm a new creation in Christ Jesus. I ain't that old dude you used to know. I ain't that old lady you used to know. I ain't that old boo you used to be with. I'm a new creation in Christ Jesus. And I'm, be I'm being renewed daily. That stuff you trying to connect to me, I take that off. I put that off a long time ago. I renewed my mind in that area and I put on the new me in that area. There are new yous that have to be put on in every area of your life. Glory to God. There's a new you that you have to dress yourself in in every area of your life. Mm. There's a new you that you got to dress yourself in in every area of your life. Put off the old, be renewed, put on the new. OK, I got to share something with you because my time is coming to a close. Let's look at something right here. Y'all got that? Verse 22 tells us put off the old man. Verse 24 says put on the new man. Verse 23 gives us the key to do it by being renewed. Be renewed in the spirit of your mind. When I'm renewing my mind to the truth of God's word, I take off the old garments and I put on my new garments, who I am in Christ. Who he's made me to be, what he says about me, not what they say. What does he say about me? Not their judgment. What does God say about me? Not their titles. What does God say about me? Not their labels. What does God say about me? He says, I'm fearfully and I'm wonderfully made. So I'm not going to let what a what a person that has no spiritual acumen say about me, dictate what I believe. I'm not going to allow an opinion to become my truth because that's not the source where truth comes from. Truth only comes from Jesus. So I only embrace what Jesus has spoken to me in the word. Hallelujah. Woo. All right. OK, let me say this real quick because I, I got less than five minutes. Let's look at 2 Corinthians chapter 10 real quick because I want to share this. This And I think I'm going to stop here and then I'll give you the grid next week. I didn't intend for this to go this way. Hallelujah. But it went this way and we asked the Spirit of God to lead us. So that means this is the way it was supposed to go. 2 Corinthians chapter 10. I want to share what God dropped on me. And when he gave it to me, I literally sat back. I said, wow. Wow, because I mean, I'm not that smart. I don't think I don't. I, I'm just not that smart. Anything good in me, you see, is because of who's in me. The greater one is on the inside of me. So when he dropped it, I'm like, Whew. you, you, you spitting, you spitting, Holy Ghost. Listen to this. Let's look at Second Corinthians, chapter 10. Verses four and five. I'll read verse three. Verse three of Second Corinthians, chapter 10 says, for though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. In other words, the flesh ain't the problem. Flesh ain't the problem. People ain't your problem. Mm. Your flesh ain't even the problem, because if you get your if you renew your mind, your flesh will be brought under control because you're a three part being. Man is a spirit. He has a soul. He lives in the body. Your flesh operates in that body realm. So if I am a spirit who is flawless, a new creation in Christ Jesus, and if I begin to renew my mind to the truth of God's word, my spirit, man, and my renewed mind will dominate my flesh. That's another topic for another time. Uh, verse four, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. They're not fleshly. But mighty through God, mighty through God, mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Verse five says casting down imaginations and every not some things. Every high thing 
that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Look, you got to deal with your thoughts. You got to filter your thoughts. We can't just think everything that comes our way. I'm going to make this statement and then I'm going to lock it down because I've hit my limit. We'll come back next week with more. Listen to this. I'm going to drop this on you and I'm going to shut it down. This is what the spirit of God showed me. Failure to cast down wrong thoughts only allows them to fester and metastasize. Ooh, Jesus. Failure to cast down wrong thoughts only allows them to fester and metastasize. What does fester mean? Fester means to become rotten and offensive to the senses. It means to become septic. So if I don't cast down impure thoughts, they begin to fester. They become rotten and they begin they begin to become offensive to other senses. Now, now, now my actions get infected and my speech gets infected because I haven't cast down impure imaginations. And, the, and he told me a failure to cast down wrong thoughts only allows them to fester and metastasize. That's a cancerous term. That's a cancerous analogy, which means it spreads to other sites in the body. So a lot of the times the issues that we see people, the addiction, the 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 the, the things that people do, the way we act out. It's not just what we do. It's because impure thoughts have metastasized to the whole body. Mm. Failure to cast down wrong thoughts only allows them the wrong thoughts to fester to spread and and become rotten and offensive and metastasize or so fester means become rotten and offensive to the senses and metastasize means to spread to other sites in the body yeah and and we encounter a lot of believers that are hurting that Areas of their lives are out of whack. Areas of their lives are out of alignment and we're trying to diagnose the problem. Well, if we really go back to it, it's because thoughts weren't cast down and they festered and they became rotten and they became offensive to they became. Mm, yeah, Lord, I see that. They became septic. And those septic thoughts metastasized to the rest of the body or to the rest of that being. So we got to embrace thought filtration. And I've run out of time. I'm going to stop right here. Next week, I want you to join me because we're going to talk about the thought filtration process. We know we got to cast imaginations down. Next week, I'm going to share with you how we go about doing that. Amen. Ooh, look, the spirit of God really dropped some gems on us. So I pray that you have an opportunity to go back and watch this again because he really spoke to our hearts. I'm going to watch this again myself a couple of times because I know the spirit of God dropped some things that we all need to hear. Well, look, I love y'all. I appreciate y'all for taking time out of y'all week and spending time with me around the word. I appreciate our fellowship together, although this is a virtual uh, encounter. There's no time or space in the in the spirit. So when you connect, it's just like my spirit is connecting with your spirit by the Holy Spirit, who we all share. So I pray that you are blessed just as much as receiving as I was giving you what God gave me. And until next week, remember this, you are empowered by faith. You are equipped for service and your success is in God's word. I love you all. Be blessed in Jesus name.